So let me just summarize what we know so far. First, you can make condensation polymers using either amidification or esterification reactions. Second, like with addition polymerization, you can make them either as homopolymers or copolymers. Using one monomer that has two different functional groups, like the polyglycolic acid, gives you a homopolymer, while using two different monomers, each with two of the same functional group, gives you a copolymer, like the nylon. Although in this case, you don't have any choice about how the two monomers are ordered in the chain. They have to be alternating. Can you see a way that it would be possible to make a random copolymer with condensation polymerization? To finish off, let's try working out what monomers a couple of condensation polymers were made from. The polymer on the left here is PET, polyethylene terephthalate, while the one on the right is polyalanine. The first thing to figure out is whether it's a condensation homopolymer or a copolymer. There are a couple of clues. Copolymers will tend to have a longer repeating unit and possibly also a longer name because each unit will include both monomers. Copolymers will also have two ester or amide groups in the repeating unit and they'll face in opposite directions whereas homopolymers will have only one. So you can see that PET on the left is probably a copolymer. It has two ester linkages while the polyalanine here has only one amide. In this way of drawing the repeating unit of polyalanine, the amide appears split up, the nitrogens on the left of the unit and the carbonyl is on the right. Don't be fooled by this. If you're unsure, draw a couple more repeating units and divide them up in a more convenient way so you can see what's going on. Okay, so with the PET, if it's a copolymer, then it must have started with a diacid and a dialcohol or diol. So looking at the ester groups, we can split them down the middle because that's where the links were made between the monomers. Uh, the chunk that's attached to the carbonyl groups was originally a diacid and the chunk with the single bonded oxygens was originally the diol. So these are the monomers that we can draw out of it. Once you've done that and you think you have the correct monomers, cover up the original polymer structure and try the reverse process. What do you get if you join those two monomers together? Whatever you draw should match the original polymer. For the polyalanine, since we know it was made from a single type of monomer, it must have had an acid on one end and an amine on the other. So it's just a matter of recreating those end groups. As with the copolymer, it's worth doing the reverse exercise and checking that when you try to make a polymer from your newly drawn monomer, that it matches the original polymer structure.